What is going on everybody? My name is Brian and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to unbox and do a little review on this rigid oscillating spindle sander. I just purchased this from Home Depot and I haven't even took it out of the box yet, as you can see, but I went and picked it up this morning and I thought, you know, why don't we take a look at it together? So a little bit about this particular model. I paid about $269 before tax for this. Now this does come with some spindle sandpaper and also comes with a four inch by 24 belt sandpaper as well. So you don't have to purchase the sandpaper right off the bat. I do believe it comes with 80 grit sandpaper. So obviously if you need something different then you'll have to purchase something different to start off with. But if you need 80 to start off with or 80 is good for you, then you already got the sandpaper. Now this model includes a five amp, three eighths horsepower motor to run this. The way this runs, as we'll see, is it spins and it also moves up and down. The spindle speed for this is up to 1,725 RPMs and it also has about a 60 OPM, which is oscillations per minute sanding action as well. It comes with about an eight foot cord, so there is a pretty good amount of cord there for you to be able to plug this in somewhere. This unit weighs about 40 or 50 pounds, so it is kind of heavy in the box. I had to actually pull it down off the shelf for the girl working there, but it does have a little bit of weight to it. I thought I could carry it out to the truck, but I was parked way too far. I ended up just throwing it in the cart. So keep that in mind when you're picking this up, it does have a little bit of weight to it. Also, when you're setting this up, wherever you're gonna set it up, it has a little bit of weight to it. This does come with a little safety switch and the table also tilts in different angles, which we'll take a look at when we open this up. Now, this does come with a rigid lifetime service agreement as well. What is a rigid lifetime service agreement? I did a little research on it to be able to tell you so that that way I'm not just talking. I actually know what I'm talking about a little bit, but to use this lifetime service agreement, you have to register this product within 90 days of purchasing it. You have to prove that you purchased it and the lifetime agreement only is to the original purchaser of this or any rigid tools. They have different types of warranties. They have a three year service warranty. I think those are for reconditioned tools. They have the lifetime warranty. And then, like I said, they have the lifetime service agreement. So to use this, I found out what you have to do is you have to, I guess, call them or email them or whatever. Then you're going to have to take this to an approved rigid repair shop or whoever they have approved. So I looked it up. There is a little thing online. You can get up and search within your little area code. And I looked up and there is one actually about 14.7 miles from me. So if I ever have to take this, it's not a very far trip, thankfully. But what the service agreement includes is you get a lifetime of free parts for this. So if it ever breaks down, then they're going to fix it for you. You have to, like I said, take it there and they have to investigate or check out what's wrong with it. And then I don't know if they fix it or you have to go back or what the case may be, or if they just give you the parts and you have to do it. I'm not 100% sure on that part, but you will get the free part. And that also includes their batteries and chargers as well. So if you have any rigid batteries or whatever, you get a lifetime of free batteries. Once you buy the battery once or the tool once, it's a lifetime battery because you could just take it there. Like they said, you have to take the battery and the charger there and they'll fix the battery or replace the battery or whatever. So rigid is alone in that warranty. I mean, a lifetime warranty on a tool is a pretty good warranty. The best warranty that I know about when it comes to tools, but let's go ahead and pull this out and we'll take a look at what you get for your $269 or the price may vary depending on your location, obviously, but I paid $269. Okay, we can see the belt sandpaper has already been installed on this. And I believe that from what I've seen so far, there's a little tensioner to allow you to change this belt that loosens up the tension on it. Then you tighten it back up and I believe this adjusts the belt up or down, depending on where you want it. You wanna to try to get it centered. But we'll set that down. These are some little rubber washers and something to lock down your spindle, I believe. And here's your spindle sandpaper they give you. 
Then there is some washers here. I do believe these go onto the throat plate when you're attaching the spindle function of this sander. And over here we have the rubber pieces that the spindles slide over. And the way that works is these expand when you twist this down onto this rubber piece, it'll expand to grab a hold of these spindles better so that way it doesn't come flying off when you're using it. And it looks like you're gonna get, and it looks like you're gonna get a little Allen wrench with some washer, some other washers as well. We'll see where they go once we start messing with this. And there's your instruction booklet, but we'll start pulling this unit out now. Boy, I don't think they could have fit that in there any tighter. <laughs> and you couldn't pull it off of the styrofoam because it's wrapped around. It was in there pretty tight. And you watch out for this little output shaft right here. It will stab you. It stabbed me in the stomach a little bit pulling it out. So. Be wary of that. Okay, so there it is. The footprint of this is about 20 inches long and about 14 inches high. So it's not gonna take up much space on your bench or wherever you decide to put this. I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put it yet. I am actually in the middle of trying to remodel this garage a little bit to be able to do more woodworking because I have a small area in here and I've always wanted to do something for myself and I think that what I'm gonna start doing is making furniture. So I'm in the process of getting all the tools that I need a little bit at a time until I can do what I wanna do. And this is obviously a step in the right direction. I also have a DeWalt planer coming as well and then I'll have to work on trying to get a joiner and then some kind of dust collection I think for in here and I think I'll be pretty set up right then. So in the next few weeks, all of that will be happening. So if you're into woodworking or tool reviews projects or whatever, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below because I have a lot of stuff coming up, including miter saw station build, a table saw station build, a router station build, a wooden workbench build, because I've been actually working off of this metal table that I made to do light welding projects and other types of projects and it's just not cut out for what I'm using it for now. So definitely gonna be building a good, solid workbench coming up. And at the moment, what I've been doing is I've actually been building little cordless tool charging stations and selling them on the marketplace and also building wooden rustic American flags and selling those as well. I'll have a video coming up of both of those too. So if you're interested in some sort of ideas about that, subscribe. But we can see here the table is all the way down and see what we have to do. There's a little knob here. Okay, now this does lock into place at certain angles that are commonly used. I believe it's like 15, 22 and a half, 45 or whatever. But there is a few detents to lock this into place if you need it a certain angle or if you needed an angle in between, then obviously you could just tighten that down. But this will go down to 48 degrees, they claim. So let's bring it up to 90. We got our flat surface here. Now I believe that this is actually to, for your wood to place your wood on so that you don't lose your wood. It doesn't shoot out of your hand because when this belt is turning, it's gonna be turning pretty fast. And we can see they have the throat installed. I do believe you only need to throat whenever you're using the spindle function of this. So we'll put the belt on first and leave. You just slide that on there. And, and it looks like all you have to do for this is put the spindle knob on and it is locked into place. It comes with a little washer on the spindle knob and it is reverse threaded. Now you gotta make sure this is seated all the way down. I was struggling there to get this to tighten up because I didn't have it seated all the way down. I just had to wiggle it a little bit and it went down. But like I said, it is reverse threaded. However, they do have a little indication on the top of it to let you know which way locks, which way unlocks. So shouldn't be too much of a problem for you. But there are storage for everything else that you have on this table. Your throat plate, it just goes in the back. And 
all of your spindle sandpaper will store on the front. Okay, I removed the belt because you have to actually attach these rubber feet to the bottom. You pull that styrofoam off and I believe you just push in. So as you can see, there is a spot for everything on this unit. So that way you don't have any loose parts floating around. Everything is in one spot, which I really like about this unit. Now I have seen some reviews about this obviously before I went and bought it. And for the price, man, I feel like that with the warranty and everything else, I feel like the, this is definitely a steal. We'll see if it performs over the long run. But even if it doesn't, like I said, with the lifetime service agreement, I mean, obviously I don't want to just have to keep going over there and getting this thing fixed. So hopefully it stands the test of time. But for $269, I feel like this is a great deal. Let's go ahead and we're, we'll turn it on. We'll sand some stuff. We'll hook the spindle up. We'll see how it runs and see if my opinion still holds true after trying it out. So let's go ahead and get it started. So as you can see, it does have a dust collection port in the back for you to be able to hook your shop back hose up to or whatever. It is just a two and a half inch slot. So if you have a shop back with a two and a half inch hose, like I happen to have, which is also a rigid, the HD1600. I just did a video about that. If you haven't seen that, definitely check that out. I'll try to link it up top if I can remember. We'll see how good the dust collection does. I struggle a lot with dust in here. It's a small shop, like I said, and it's hard for me to control the dust. So once I get my joiner, I'm definitely gonna work on dust collection next. So if you have any recommendations or any tips for me about dust collection, make sure you leave that below. But let's go ahead, I'm gonna turn this on and we'll sand a little bit, see, what, see how it does. So as you've seen, I had to adjust the belt a little bit. It was rubbing, but I think I got it tuned in pretty good. Now you can see there is a little bit of sawdust on the top, but I mean, I took a pretty good chunk out of this piece of wood. And the fact that there's only that little bit, it, it does seem to be working pretty good as far as dust collection goes. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this table does angle down. Just adjust this table to your 45 degree mark on the side you can see that there are angles on the side to let you know exactly how you got this table tilted and what angle it actually is how true it is i don't know i'll definitely going to check that out later if i need to be that precise i'm also going to make sure that the deck is level as well and adjust that if it needs to be adjusted but looks pretty good to me so far now i'm going to go ahead and try to sand this see how good it does at an angle So, I mean, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty smooth, honestly. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the spindle and we'll run that for a second, just see how that runs. Now, to attach the spindle, you just simply remove the spindle nut and you'll pull your throat plate, which is stored in the back, and you'll put it on just like that. Then you'll simply just and put this where the throat plate was for storage. They have it nice and cut out for you right there. And it fits in there pretty securely, so you don't have to worry about it falling out much if you're moving this. Obviously, you want to pay pretty close attention to it and maybe pull it out if you got to move it a lot. Or to move it in a long distance, you may want to pull it out just to try not to break it. But we'll go ahead. Let's hook up the inch and a half 
spindle and grab the washer. That washer looks like it fits over pretty good. Then there is also little washers that fit over this. Not exactly sure which top washer should be using. I'm not sure it's gonna matter much because like I said, all this is doing is applying downward pressure to expand this rubber piece to stop this sandpaper from sliding off. And that feels pretty secure. So let's go ahead and turn it on and sand some stuff. Works pretty good. I didn't have it tight enough. It started loosening up. So you had to keep an eye on that, just maybe tighten it a little bit more. But all in all, for $269, I feel like this is gonna do a, an amazing job for me. And you can also see a track right here, and I'm sure there are some uses for that track as well, which I may have to figure out later on, but it's there for a reason, obviously. Maybe for some sort of fence or something but I'll figure that out later. And also, I'll just mention that there are holes here if you have a place to secure this to. And what may be a good idea and what may be something that I'll consider is to maybe mount this to some sort of table, a flip table with maybe my planer on the other side because I have, like I said, a serious space issue in here and I'm gonna try to remedy that the best I can. I'm gonna start getting rid of some stuff. I'm gonna focus a lot more on woodworking because I feel like with the space that I have, and I actually enjoy it, it's fun. I would love to be able to make some sort of like farmhouse furniture and stuff like that. It's really fun to me. So I think that that's gonna be the direction that I'm gonna be going in for the moment. And like I said, there'll be projects, woodworking projects. I'm also gonna to stick to some of the mechanical projects and also mechanic tools that I was reviewing from the get-go, welding tools. I mean, I'm just gonna do it all, but I am really busy with the woodworking and I will have a lot of stuff coming up with the woodworking at the moment. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe below. If you own this, let us know down in the comments what you think about this and if it's held up for you, if you've held it, if you've owned it for in any significant amount of time. Everything I've seen about this has been amazing reviews and people love it. Like I said, for $269, I feel like that it's gonna save me a lot of time. And once I do my cordless tool storage product, you'll see how this is gonna save me a lot of time with that as well. So definitely stick around for that too. I feel like this is uh, an investment that's going to save me time and that time is going to make me more money in the long run. So if you're on the fence about buying this and you have the money and you need it, I would purchase it, man. Lifetime guarantee or lifetime service agreement, whatever it is. Honestly, Rigid, I'm really digging some of Rigid's tools at the moment. I feel like that with the warranty and the quality of their tools, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of more, a lot of people should maybe take a look at Rigid if you're in the cordless tool or power tool market right now. Definitely give them a look. But I appreciate you watching. And if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments. Maybe I can answer. Maybe someone else can answer. Until next time, y'all, stay real.